All right, everybody. Welcome to the first back-end meeting. I'm Adam, my team major, and I'm going to show you guys how to use Flask or the basics of Flask. So you guys have a pretty good idea what it is. Never used it before. Like, what's your kind of familiarity with it? I've never used it before. Never used it before. I've used it several times. Okay. Never used it. Okay. For people who doesn't use it before, what it is, it's a it's a micro yeah. application framework used to develop web applications. It's different from things like Django because Django is like a full stack. Um, whereas a framework, it comes with a lot more things. While Flask is more lightweight, you you pretty much use what you use. Like it doesn't come with too many things either. So just just think of it as like lightweight compared to something like Django that's full full stack and full of stuff. I know it's a terrible explanation, but all right, so let's move on on how to use it. First of all, oh, by the way, I forgot to install. So to install it, you just do a pip install flask. I don't know if you guys already have pip tools set up, but that's how you do it. You do pip install flask. What's a pip install? So when you download Python, you download this tool. It comes with this tool called pip, and you could use pip to install like packages and stuff. Is that sound accurate, Abraham? It's a Python package manager, like yeah, npm great. or yarn. Thank you. Thank you. If you use Linux for most distributions, you get it uh, embedded with uh, with the distribution. Not all of them. So but... also, uh, I don't know about Linux, but Macs come with them. Come with it. Yeah. Thanks for the. Although I use pip three. Yeah, pip pip three depend. It's like machine dependent. Like I. I can use pip3 and it'll do the same exact thing. It just depends on your Python installation. So yeah, so you download it with pip install flask. So I don't know if you guys already have it. You can follow along. I'll be typing it up as we go. Our, my, the little lesson I have planned. So you could follow along if you guys want to. If not, you can just watch the recording later on YouTube. It's totally cool. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is just make a simple um, web application and run it. So to start off, I'm just going to import flask so type from flask import flask make sure the, the second flask is capital F then I'm gonna add app equals flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore then I'll put over here if underscore name equals equals no underscore underscore main app dot run so this runs the app but we're gonna we need to make a home page because it's just pretty much a website running on your local host so we're gonna make a home page for our website so to make a home page for our website we'll def make a Python function so def I'll just call it home you could call it anything call it home page whatever it doesn't matter home and then I'm just gonna put return hello world or anything doesn't matter and also gotta make define it where it is by creating a route so at app dot route is a one forward slash so this is our home page and now I'm gonna run it by typing in Python I could spell Python Oh, we gotta go desktop first. Man, pretty unprepared. <laughs> All right, so now Python tutorial.py. Oh, I spelled name wrong. There we go. So now the web the website is running on our local hosts. So if we just copy this and paste it into our browser. There's our home page. This is just the one hello world I put down there. So this is the start of it. So you guys like following along so far? You, you guys good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just stop me stop me out going too fast if you don't understand anything. I'm not sure everyone understands how to use this. Okay, so what we've done is just we pretty much created a website and here's our home page. 
So now we want to create more pages. So say I want to create a, like a page for, um, let's see, um, I don't know. Like say we want to reg register, I don't know. So let's make a registration page. So what are we going to do to make a new page for our website? We're going to create a new function. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it registration. And we're just going to return whatever text we want. Oh, and also you can put HTML in here. So say I want to put, I'll just use, yeah, put a heading. I mean, it's kind of fitting that we're making a registration page. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Registration. It's pretty basic. It's pretty. And now we have to find the route. Where, where can we find it on our website? We can find it if we go. To our website and type in slash registration. All right, save it. Let me rerun it again. Control C to cancel out of the previous running web application. So then we restart it. And there we go. So let's reload. And now let's do slash registration. And there we go. We, now we have two pages on our website. We have our home page, which can be accessed just by a single slash or just nothing. And then we have our registration page. We just type in slash registration. Oh, wait, I, missed, I spelled registration wrong. There we go. So are you guys good at that? Sounds good. OK. Pretty simple. So now I just want to show you guys something real quick. This, when you, when you make a new page for our website, it has to start with a slash. If it doesn't start with slash, look at this nasty error. I'll show you. See, URLs must start with a leading slash. So let's add that back. And another thing, it's good. It's better to add a slash at the end of the route too, because look what happens when we don't have a slash at the end and we try to access this page with a slash at the end. So we run it again. So look, now I'm going to add a slash at the end of the URL. And keep in mind, there's no slash at the end right here. So when this, so when that, when you enter that in, it gets an error, URL not found. But if you add a slash, you can access this page with the slash or without the slash. So now I'm going to do it. And there we go, it works. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is how to redirect one page to another. And that's done by importing the redirect extension on over here on the top of the import statements. So from Flask, import Flask, and now redirect. And we also need an extension called URL underscore four. So now let's create a new page. I'm going to call it um, just, I don't know, sign up. And since sign up and registration are kind of the same thing, I'm just going to redirect. So whenever someone types sign up, it's going to go to the registration page. So to do that, I got, a, I got this function over here. And now we're going to return redirect function. And now URL underscore underscore four. And then we want registration, right? So we want to find we want we want we want our sign up thing to redirect to the URL for the registration function. We put the name of the function in here. Quotes. There we go. I get it. Okay. Now to add a route to it. Let's just call it sign up like that. Oh. So now let's reload this and see our redirect. So when I type sign up over here, it should just bring me to the registration page which it did. 
I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's, let's start off from right here. So now we're at our home page. Now let's go do slash sign up and actually redirect us back to our registration page. Yep. So that's how our um, redirects work with Flask. So everyone good so far? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is um, talk about how to render an HTML template for a page. So say you have this nice HTML template you wanna put up on one of your pages. To do that, we need the render template extension. So we do render underscore template. And also another thing, when Flask is gonna look for a template folder within your current directory. So I'm on my desktop right now. I have a templates folder inside of it with my templates in there. So you're gonna need to make a template folder in your current directory and then add that template that you're going to use to the folder to access it. So now I'm going to create another page and I'm going to access this template I used for class it's like two days ago. So I'm going to call it poem since it's literally just a poem. And now I'll do return render underscore template and now we need the name of the file so it was index.html and also I gotta forgot forgot to add this we need to pass in name equals none and then name equals name now we find this at slash poem. All right, let me reload this. And now let's see if we can find it at slash poem. Here's this beautiful poem. I don't know where it's from, but. I use it for glass. So that's how we render an HTML template with Flask. All right. The next thing I have is um, post and get requests. Whenever you, um, let's, whenever you type in a website, press enter, it sends a get request so you could get the information from the web server. But you could also send information to a server with a post request. Those are those are two types of HTTP requests. So what you could do is specify what happens based on whether what happens in a given web page, whether it's a GET request or a post request. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to add here the request extension. And let's make a new page. Let's see, uh, let's kind of call it login. And if request dot method equals equals. Now if it's a post request, You know what, now, I'm gonna, let's do something else instead. So right now, hmm. I'm just gonna show you guys how to do, how to pass in variables. So let me show you what I mean by that. So first let's make a profile page. That's just gonna take in a username and then print that person's profile. So it's going to return a username. It's going to it's going to return a string with the person's username. Profile. 
and app.route. User. So right here, this username in the brackets, this is our variable and it could be anything. So you'll see once this gets passed. Hey Adam, you should put the column uh, after the function declaration. Pro profile. Yeah, you missed the column at oh, the end. Thanks. Okay. So let's reload this. So watch, so it's saying, I want to access my profile. So Adam's profile, type user slash Adam. Oh, I added an extra comma there, but you see what I mean? The the variable, which is username, which in, my, which in this case is Adam, gets passed here. So, oh, my bad. So it returns username, which is Adam's profile. So now that I have this set up, now we're going to make a kind of a login page. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here I have this HTML to create a request form. Here's the form. It takes a name and it submits that name. So we're going to make a, like a login form. So, and we're going to use post and get request. That's what I was talking about earlier. So let's make that login thing that I was going to do earlier. So now if the request we've received is a post request, we're going to take the name that you forgot the colon again. Sorry. God. I've been using Java too much lately. Okay. There we go. Thanks. So if the request is a post, we're going to take the information because remember posts, you send information to the server and get which retrieves information to the server. So we're going to take the information that we post to the server and we're going to put it in store in this variable called user form. And the reason I put NM right here is because in the login form name is goes to the variable NM. So that's why I'm putting NM here. So we take our variable and then we're going to pass it to the profile thing we just made. So we're going to use the redirect and then we're going to use the URL for this met this, this function, the profile. But we're also going to pass in um, the variable, the user variable that we're getting from the form. So username equals user. And now over here, we're going to have the request form itself. So we're just going to render template this login I have right here. Login.html. No, oh, wait, I forgot the commas. So by default, these functions, unless you specify whether or not your request is a is a post request, it's going to think it's a get request. So um, when we first run this, this is going to be ignored right here. This if statement is going to be completely ignored because when we first access it, it's going to be a get request. And then we're going to in input information. We're going to send the post. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. So here's. Um, do you want to talk about what's the difference between get and post? Yeah, so a get request is you're, re you're retrieving information from a, from a web server. And a post request, you're sending information to a server. So I'll show you what I mean when I, when I do this little example over here. So we're going to do login, and we have to specify that we're using both. Did I forget the methods? No, there we go. Post. And then get. 
So let me rerun this now. Okay, so when I type slash login right here, this is going to be a get request because we're getting this login form from the web server. And then when I enter the information, so I'm going to enter, let's see, Joe. When I submit this, I'm sending a post request to the server. I'm sending the information, this, this name, Joe. And once I send this information, it's going to redirect us back to the profile function, and it's going to display Joe's profile, which is just a string that says Joe's profile on it. Like magic. And wow, we're doing well on time. So. And you guys can imagine how you can use that to like uh, add a, a password functionalities and like some functionalities. So like, you can make a pretty powerful application with just that. Yep, you can make a full application just from using Flask. The front end side of it, you can just make your HTML. Flask works with Bootstrap also. And so, yeah, so you have everything you need to make a website, but we're going to be using it mainly for like the back end part of the site. And this is really all I have for the Flask demonstration. I didn't think I'd get through that that quickly. So did I go through something too fast? Is anybody like confused on any points or any question of that nature? No, that's fine. I think it was pretty clear unless anyone else has any questions. Yeah, it was pretty clear. Okay. okay. So does the, does the back end team understand what to do like, for like the whole project? What do you mean by that? Like, like, so are we doing like this pretty much for the project? What he showed? Um, no, what I meant was, do you guys understand like what we're doing? For the for the hackathon website, like we'll be doing something similar where we're getting login functionalities and we're going to be like connecting databases stuff like that. Oh, okay, yeah. I haven't shown the database portion of it. I'm planning on making for our next meeting. I'm planning on showing because we're going to be we decide to scrap Rust and everything, so we're going to be using Mongo. So we're going to be using the Mongo driver thing in Python to access the database. So I'll be showing you guys how to use that next week and I'll also be giving more direction on like what exactly we're going to be doing but this is so, this is a good first I will time. like sorry no continue please so how will assignments work do we get like a a new assignment each week or do we get like one long term assignment how does this work so ah, you can that Sorry, Adam. You can answer it already. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. So what I'm thinking is just getting you guys accustomed to Flask and then the database, and then we'll start um giving out like splitting up the work and doing that kind of stuff. Okay, so that'll probably be like what a month from now, or maybe like well, we'll see. Next week we're gonna be doing the database portion, so maybe like two weeks we'll start doing like real stuff. The directors are still okay. the, the leads, and both um, Abraham and Archie are still kind of in the like, early stages of this. But in two weeks, hopefully, or less than two weeks, we'll hopefully be like split, like um, dividing up the work and start actually working on the site. Yeah, anything to add, Arjun? Yeah. So the backend portion of the website's like obviously very important. Um, people are going to come to, like, they're going to see the pretty front end. But the thing that's going to do, like, the heavy lifting and making sure everything's happening is the back end portion. These guys are pretty important. Um, Ava and I had a goal of, like, trying to finish the back end. Like, I mean, uh, we have a goal of, like, that we we're going to give you guys because you're the back end team of um, finishing all the back end. I think we're going to say by, like, mid March. Um, that's, I know it's like a stretch goal. Uh, but let's see, let's see how it goes. As far as assignments are, how assignments are going to work, it's going to be, um, so I'm not sure Conroy, I didn't interview you, but for everyone else I interviewed, um, uh, we kind of explained like the dev team structure and how, um, agile methodology works. So it's going to be that way. We're going to get like, have a Kanban board, uh, and we're going to have a, like, um, 
you're going to self your, uh, self assign yourself to issues probably on github um but maybe on notion and um I, we'll have two week sprints um so like every two weeks you get to do something like you're, you're gonna work on something and you know, like some small like portion of the large project is that okay Connor? yeah makes sense now so uh to elaborate on what arjun was mentioning like we'll be splitting up like various parts so let's say for example um we want to complete like uh the user like creating a user for example we would have that split up into multiple uh pieces and then you guys will be able to assign yourselves those pieces within those two week sprints right and uh we'll be doing um pair programming i know like the the, the back end team is kind of like five people so i guess like um Abe or I could join like one pair, probably with Adam himself. And uh, that way, like, you guys can like learn from each other, see how it works in like a real dev team. And also like have you have at least one person to support you in each thing you do. So that was the idea. Yeah, we're, oh, I was going to mention, we're still finalizing some details that we're going to get as like, for example, we're not exactly sure on some of the uh, specific parts of the database. We have a database in mind, but specific details because uh, we're waiting to finalize, like, for example, let's say a beginner track or like uh, experiencing, we're not exactly 100% sure on what type of data that will be required for the database. So we're still trying to get that confirmed with the, with the rest of the uh, directors in the organization itself. Um, oh, my bad. Sorry, good. No, no good. Now I was just gonna say that this kind of concludes our updates. Unless you have something else to add. Yeah. Um. So as far as like, yeah. Um. We'll probably have uh, start rolling out like stuff for you guys to do. Maybe. Uh. Yeah. Two weeks seems like a uh, reasonable uh deadline or like thing to get started with. Um, but be sure to like practice this stuff on your own. Like this seems simple, but can you do it without looking at Adam's code? Yeah, for sure. So like practice this stuff on your own. Like be sure like you know what you're doing. Adam, do you want to assign some kind of homework? Well, as for homework, I just say look over the Flask quick start um, page, uh, the official Flask documentation. There's a quick start page. If I mean, if you if you read through all of that, maybe run some of the code yourself. And if you don't, if you're not like a learner, like if you, if you say if you're more of a visual learner, you can watch the this Tech with Tim video series. I'll also link that too. But just try to get like a basic understanding of Flask, so you'll be prepared to use it. And next week we'll be yeah. with Mongo. D I'll be like showing you Mongo DB and Mongo Driver. So just get pretty familiar with Flask over this week, I'd say. Is there maybe a good like YouTube video series you'd like recommend? Yeah, for sure. Tech what he said, the tech with Tim. I'll be looking. At, I'll be looking everything that I, that I use. To. So uh, feel free to. Oops, sorry. I was gonna say feel free to if you have any questions or if you have any difficulties, feel free to drop in the back end as well, and uh, we'll probably address that or just help you out with that because I know with learning new things you will have your own struggles, but. Feel free to know that you know we're all here to help, and if you have any questions or concerns or any problems, definitely feel free to let me, or Jen or Adam know as well. You can just DM me too if you have any questions. Like if you're just like making something, you understand what's what's not working, just DM me. I'll. I mean, to be honest, you can DM any of us, uh, me, Adam, or uh, Abraham. Any one of us will respond as best we can. Um, also, guys, um, see if you can get kind of like get to know each other over these like weeks because you'll be like pair programming. Um, so you also get to know each other during that time, but also like if you know who the other person is, then that'll be cool because like you'll be more comfortable with working with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Adam, like in the middle, if you want to like see if you want to like schedule some sort of like a social. And if if you don't want like an official social, you guys can just meet up on your own. Yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of that, um, 
Is the time frame for like every Monday for back end meeting at 8 p.m. Is that okay with everybody? Oh yeah, I was gonna let that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it works good for me. Because it works good for all right. So it works good for everyone. So just keep it Monday at eight then. Yeah. Cool. Uh, actually, actually, um, I'm not sure if you guys did this in the first social, but um, did you guys introduce yourself? Like who's Dima? Who's Simon? Who's Conroy? Are you sure we like, did? Oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, let's do it again. All right. I guess I'll go first. I'm Adam. I'm an IT major. I'm my focus is more on cybersecurity, so I'll be like my specialty comes from more like securing the web application as we're developing it to prevent attacks like cross site scripting, SQL injection, that kind of stuff. So that's why I don't seem I'm not like more of like the programming type, you know, but I can still do it pretty decently. It's just I'm kind of bad at explaining things. I'm Abraham. I like to glue stuff and break things. I'm a senior IT major and I like gophers. I'm Conroy. Um, I'm a sophomore and I'm a computer science major. Uh, I'm Simon. Uh, I'm a CS major. Hi. Pre-rehearsed script like Abraham, but I'm urgent. There's nothing special. That's it. All right, cool. Um, um cool. I'm Dima. I'm a CS junior. Uh, I'm an international student from Russia, and uh, I love coding, especially backend. That's why I'm here with you. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I mean, I know that was kind of lame, but you know, it's, it's the more we do this, the more you get to know the other person. At least you get to know how much they hate this stuff. So, all right, thanks for coming, everyone.